These are the newest measurements of 3i Atlas from the past 48 hours, and this might be the most unusual change we've recorded so far. The object's brightness has dropped by nearly 40% compared to the values published last week, and its apparent rotation period has shifted by almost three hours. Both of these changes are significant because they contradict what we should see from a comet that just survived perihelion intact. So, in this analysis, we'll go through what these brightness changes mean, why the rotation timing shift matters, what the new photometry suggests about the nucleus, and why these trends are creating serious questions for astronomers tracking this interstellar object. We'll also compare the data to normal post-perihelion comet behavior and explain why 3i Atlas does not fit those patterns. Let's start with the brightness drop, because that's the first thing observers noticed. On November 12th, the average magnitude of 3i Atlas was about 14.9, based on stacked exposures from several mid-sized telescopes. Two nights ago, that value fell to 16.1. For a typical comet, brightness depends on sunlight scattering off dust, gas, and the coma. When brightness drops this sharply, this soon after perihelion, it usually means activity is shutting down quickly. But 3i Atlas is only 0.18 astronomical units farther from the sun than it was last week. That distance change alone cannot explain a 40% reduction in brightness. This is unusual because comets normally fade along a predictable curve after passing perihelion. Most objects gradually decrease in brightness at a rate defined by a power law, often something like r to the minus 4, where r is distance from the sun. The fade is slow, consistent, and mainly controlled by declining solar energy. But 3i Atlas has faded more in five days than most comets fade in three weeks at the same distance range. The second anomaly is the rotation period shift. Astronomers estimate rotation periods by tracking changes in brightness over time, known as the light curve. Last week, the object appeared to rotate once every 11.6 hours, but the newest observations now show a rotation period closer to 14.3 hours. That means the nucleus slowed down by nearly 25% in less than a week. This is a major red flag. If a comet slows down, something must be applying torque, basically twisting or pushing on it. That usually comes from jets of gas erupting from the surface. When jets fire unevenly, they can speed up or slow down rotation. But here is the conflict. If the jets were powerful enough to change the rotation period by three hours, then we should have seen more brightness, not less. Stronger outgassing increases dust, which increases reflected light, which makes comets look brighter, not dimmer. So the brightness drop and the rotation slowdown contradict each other if the comet behaved like a normal comet. Let's talk about the coma, which is the cloud of gas and dust surrounding 3i Atlas. Multiple observers reported that the coma has become more compact, shrinking from about 85,000 kilometers across to 57,000 kilometers, as measured by radial brightness profiles. A shrinking coma means less gas and dust is being released, but at the same time, the central region looks sharper with a steeper brightness gradient. This can happen if the dust grain size distribution changes. Larger grains reflect sunlight differently than small grains, and can make the coma look more condensed, even when activity has not completely stopped. But this still does not fully explain the rotation slowdown. To change the rotation speed this quickly, jets would need to be expelling gas at a rate comparable to, or greater than, what was seen earlier in the month. Yet the coma is shrinking, not expanding. The dust tail is thinning, not growing. The gas tail is faint compared to measurements from early November. Every indicator of activity suggests output is decreasing, yet rotation is changing as if output were increasing. Now, let's compare this behavior to what we expect from comets after perihelion. When comets travel away from the sun, their surfaces cool, sublimation slows, and rotation usually stabilizes. Only strong, active jetting can continue to alter rotation. For example, Comet 67P experienced small rotation period changes of only a few minutes per week when it was highly active. But 3i Atlas shifted by almost three hours. That is a magnitude of change that we do not typically observe. And remember, 
According to the high-resolution images taken on November 11th, the object is still a single nucleus, with no signs of fragmentation. Fragmentation would easily explain the brightness drop and the rotation change. When a comet breaks into multiple pieces, brightness can drop as fragments drift apart and the overall scattering area changes. The rotation period can shift if the mass distribution changes. But astronomers confirmed a single, intact nucleus, not a fragmented one. So we are left with anomalies in brightness, rotation, coma structure, and activity level, all without fragmentation. Let's examine the possible explanations, starting with surface chemistry. We know from James Webb Space Telescope observations that 3I Atlas has an unusually high carbon dioxide to water ratio, about eight times higher than typical comets. Carbon dioxide sublimates at lower temperatures than water ice. This means that as the comet recedes from the sun, carbon dioxide output could drop sharply once the temperature falls below its sublimation threshold. If carbon dioxide was responsible for most of the earlier jets, its decline could drive the brightness drop. But carbon dioxide sublimation alone cannot explain a rotation slowdown unless carbon dioxide jets were previously concentrated in a very specific region. If one jet shut down while another continued, that imbalance could create torque and slow the rotation. But this would require the jets to be extremely asymmetrical, something that should produce visible changes in the coma's structure. Yet the coma shape does not show clear directional asymmetry right now. Another explanation is delayed thermal lag. When a comet passes perihelion, heat absorbed by the nucleus can continue migrating inward for days or even weeks. This can trigger new sublimation from deeper layers, even as surface activity declines. If the interior releases gas from an isolated vent or pocket, it can produce torque without producing large amounts of dust. That would slow the rotation while reducing overall brightness. The issue with this explanation is that the light curve data should show rapid fluctuations from episodic venting, but the new period measurements appear smooth and consistent, suggesting the change may be more continuous than impulsive. Another possibility is nucleus reshaping. If internal stresses change the distribution of mass without fragmenting the object, its rotation period could shift. For example, if a cavity collapsed, or if a region inside the comet compacted, this could increase the comet's moment of inertia, slowing its rotation, even with no external torque. But we rarely see such large changes over such a short time frame. And once again, the coma brightness drop does not support a major interior collapse releasing any noticeable dust into the surrounding region. Let's consider dust characteristics. If the comet is now releasing larger grains instead of fine dust, the coma would appear dimmer because larger grains scatter less sunlight per unit mass. This could produce a brightness drop without reducing overall activity. But this would not affect rotation unless the jet distribution also changed in a meaningful way. So this explanation addresses one anomaly, but not both, and it does not fully resolve the timing mismatch between fading brightness and the slowing nucleus. There is also the possibility that the rotation measurement last week was incorrect. Light curve data from faint, distant comets can be noisy. If the earlier rotation estimate was influenced by irregular brightness variations caused by jets, not by the nucleus itself, then the apparent shift might reflect cleaner data now that the comet is dimmer. But several observing teams independently measured similar values, making this explanation less likely. A more extreme explanation is that the comet is entering a low activity phase because of surface sealing. When cosmic rays alter materials over billions of years, they can create hardened crusts. If surface pores and fissures sealed after perihelion cooling, jets could become intermittent or shut down entirely. The torque from the final bursts of activity might have slowed the nucleus, and now activity may be too low to counteract that earlier change. This is consistent with the dimming, the shrinking coma, and the steady decline in gas output, but the scale of the rotation shift remains unusually large for a comet at this distance. Now let's summarize the data. Brightness has dropped sharply. Rotation has slowed dramatically. The coma has shrunk but become sharper in structure, and there is still no indication of fragmentation. These trends, taken together, do not match typical post-perihelion behavior. 
Continued monitoring over the next week will be essential to determine whether this marks the end of major activity from 3i Atlas or the beginning of a different phase entirely. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you on the next one.